Hello and welcome on this quick video demo on how you can use Amazon AppFlow for your SAP system. First of all, you would need to create a new connection to your SAP system. So let me navigate to Amazon AppFlow and then click on the left side under the connections and pick up the proper connector SAP all data. And as you can see, I have there already some defined connections, but I will guide you through a new connection creation uh, just to understand what input parameters you would need to input in, in here. So under the application host URL, uh, you would need to enter typically your load balancer that is uh, behind your SAP systems. And in the second one, uh, you would need to enter the um, catalog or the application service path, which represents catalog of your OData services with the latest version. Under the port number, you will enter the port of your um, endpoint, uh, the SAP client number, the SAP login language, and then you have two connections options possible. One is the public endpoint or the private link, which will then go through uh, the private AWS network. In that case, uh, which will be also the case for our demonstration, uh, when you enable the private link, you will also need to enter the private link service name. And then for the authentication methods, we support two options. It's either basic authentication or O2 with authorization code, URL and token. So for the basic authentication, just enter the username and password. And under the encryption, you can either use AWS managed keys or your own keys. And at the end, you just need to enter the name of, the, the name of your connection. So once everything is created, the system will connect to your SAP system and query uh, the catalog. In case you have enforced the acceptance of uh, the AWS private link connection, you would need to accept it under your uh, VPC endpoint services. As you can see, uh, the demo internal connection was successfully created. It will show you the connection mode as well as the private link service name. In the next steps, we will run through creation of the new flow. So navigate again under the Amazon app flow, under the flows, click on the create flow. In the flow name, you just enter the name of your flow uh, with optional description. Again, you can define for the encryption, either use the AWS own keys or your own encryption key. You can also add tag for better identification of the billing for your Amazon app flow. In the source name, uh, you will select the connector you want to use, in this case the SAP OData. In the OData connections, you will pick up the connection that we created previously. And you can see the system, once the private link is created successfully, will confirm this with the message in here. When you choose on the SAP OData, we will query the service metadata for the catalog service in SAP with full list of available services. So we will use for this one, the sales aura table export. And then I can choose two subjects. One is the entity of test, which is the full table export or the delta links of entity, which is basically the incremental export. So let me first guide you through the incremental export then I will switch it back to the full export as I want to show you the full export data. So in the destination details, uh, you can select the Amazon S3 for export of your data. Under the bucket details, you will uh, choose the um, bucket for your export. You can also optionally add uh, the bucket prefix. Under additional settings, you can either export the data to uh, JSON format, which is per default with Amazon AppFlow, or you can then also pick up CSV or Parquet. You can also uh, aggregate all data into one file, or you can just use no aggregation. In that case, uh, as we will read the all data from your SAP system, we'll drop it and save it in S3. You can also add the timestamp to the file name for better authentication, and you can also choose your own folder structure in the Amazon S3 bucket. From the flow trigger perspective, you have two options how you can trigger the flow. You can either run it on demand, which means that you can either um, trigger it through the AWS Management Console, you can use the programmatically AWS API, or you can also use the AWS CLI. The other option is to run the flow on schedule, which means that you can either run it per uh, regular minutes, hours, 
days weekly or monthly and you can also run it one time so the one time is only supported uh, is a supported for with the full transfer incremental transfer the repetition is only supported with the incremental transfer so you can say every five minutes i will start at certain point time and date and of course important in the incremental transfer is to select the field in the table that will identify basically the new or change records and that is coming from the old data layer then the delta uh, changes that you defined in a prior table. So let me now switch it back uh, to the one time and the full transfer with uh, the object entity of test which will export the entire table for our demonstration. We run uh, the flow on demand. In the next section you can define the data fields so you can map the source to destination field mapping and in that case you can either field, uh, map all the fields directly so, or you can pick it up one by one. You can also modify the values individually per each field in the table. In that case, you can either mask the data, which will then add characters to your data. You can also truncate values and depending on how you want to truncate. You can also add so-called validation, uh, which will, uh, for example, say that if my delivery time is zero, then I would either want to terminate the flow or ignore the records. In the next screen, you can add filters for uh, that will filter basically the records that you want to transfer based upon uh, the uh, filter criteria. So we can say, for example, that everything that the employee ID is, for example, less than 10. And you can also add additional filter. You can also add different uh, criteria that will be made, right? So you can do any ranges in the data you would need for your processing. In the next screen, you will just go into the summary table. Uh, then we'll give you all the selections you, you uh, entered. And then we will hit on create flow. When everything is successful, you will see and get the message that the flow has been created successfully. And you can see again in the flow details, all the input parameters you have entered. Under the run history as well, you can see how many times the flow has been executed. As you can see, it didn't run yet. So let me just go ahead and trigger the run of the flow. So the export is taking around the 30 seconds and it's exporting something around the 7.2 uh, megabyte of data. So let's just wait until the data are exported. And in the last part of the video, I will show you uh, how you can quick look on your exported data from SAP system. So you can see that the flow already finished. So it took 30 seconds to export 7.3 megabyte of data. You can also see in the run history, the details of your flow export. So now I will uh, click on the destination bucket, which is created with uh, the subfolder of your um, flow name. And here you can see your exported data which I will click on and uh, select the object that has been exported and will then, uh, through the object action, query the data with the extra select or with the TINA. So I will just select the input parameters, which is nice in JSON, and output parameters as well in JSON. And we'll then run a simple query with uh, the limit of five queries. And here you can see your data in JSON format exported from your SAP system. As last, I would like to also uh, show you to keep a uh, look into our documentation where you have all the details and requirements uh, to run the SAP Data Connector with Amazon AppFlow, like the uh, minimal native version you need uh, for export and OData version we support, as well as how you can create the private connections and other requirements and the full details of all the fields that we demonstrate today. And that's basically it. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to come back to us. Thank you and have a great day.